So today I'm going to talk about a very important topic, and it has to do with uh, arteriosclerotic changes or disease actually starting in young people. Now you wouldn't think heart disease started this early, but there's some very interesting data, I'll put all the links down below, that discusses various uh, changes in the coronary artery and even the aorta uh, very early on. And this data was acquired from several different areas. One document included the deaths of young people in traumatic events, observing that the arteries actually had the start of coronary heart disease. Another area was autopsies of 300 soldiers in the Korean War. They found 77% had coronary heart disease. In fact, most 20 to 29 year olds had fatty streaks in their coronary artery as well as in the aorta, which is a larger blood vessel. Now this may be hard to believe, but in one paper I found some very interesting data of fatty streaks starting when you're seven years old. I mean, that is literally crazy. But the fibrous placking usually starts in your 20s. But here's the catch, without symptoms. So the child, the young adult, has no clue what's going on. And if you have no symptoms, you're not gonna get an evaluation. You're not gonna get a test. So a lot of this data was discovered after these young people die and then evaluating an autopsy what's going on. Now, how can this be? Well, I found some additional data. I'll put the link down below. And they're talking about the risk factor. And the most important risk factor is the insulin resistance, okay? And this comes from consuming too many carbohydrates. So I did some more research and I found this study, the Diet and Coronary Heart Disease Study Project in 1967. And this was the percent of macros back then for children and young adults. 18% protein, 40% fat, and 42% carbs. So at the time, they assumed that it was the fat that was causing it, but we know now it's the carbs. The percentage of carbs for a young adult should be 5%, not 42. Now, even the American Heart Association is mentioning sugar and the reduction of that in children and young adults. They said that you should consume no more than six teaspoons of added sugar. And we're not even talking about the sugar that's in the carbs that they consume, but the added sugar. So now this is a better recommendation if we compare it to what the child normally consumes, 19 teaspoons of sugar on average, but this figure should really be zero teaspoons of sugar. I mean, if you think about it, what is an average blood sugar? It's 82. What does that mean? It means the total amount of sugar in your blood, which is a lot of blood, should be no more than one level teaspoon, okay? That gives you a blood sugar of 82. So anything more than that, is gonna be quickly removed from the blood and stored either as fat or cholesterol. And so insulin is actually working really, really hard depending on what's happening in the blood with sugar. So it's very obvious to anyone seeing this data, this connection of why a young person might have the beginnings of heart disease so early uh, because they're just consuming too many carbs. And those carbs create several mechanisms that destroy the inside of the vascular system. So if you're new to my channel, I put an intro video up right here. Check it out.